Shit, all right, we're live. Okay, so uh, brown guy here. <laughs> brown guys, uh, most guys know me, Melendez. Shit, I went in in 07, enlisted with Charlie125, uh, uh, the Wyoming Armory. Shortly before I deployed, a bunch of people got moved around. Uh, so I ended up uh, going over Ramadi with uh, headquarters uh, section out of Flint. That was fun, you know. Um, private right out of boot, I was right out of boot camp. I was literally home for like three days and then um, caught up with everybody else at Mope Station, Fort Hood. And, um, uh, and then after that stint, I uh, was home for about five, six months. And uh, I volunteered with a 425 for uh, their uh, second deployment uh, in the Talifar. And uh, those are two totally different deployments, you know, completely eye-opening. Different experiences, a lot of things kind of varied there, but you know, you have this, uh, well, I experienced like the excitement, the you know, uncertainty of, you know, you have your expectations and, you know, we've all seen like war movies and shit and you're just kind of thinking, oh, it's going to be something like that, right? And I don't, you know, you don't know nothing. Um, and you get there and it's like totally not what it is. Granted, I'm, I'm thankful that, you know, I came back alive one piece and all that good stuff, but I think what did it for me was just being so amped up and always being mentally ready, I guess, for the what ifs. You know, you're just constantly on that adrenaline rush. You know, nothing really crazy, I guess. Nothing out of the norm, I guess, of that first deployment. Just the average stuff. You know, you get some indirects, come nowhere really near. You know, you got to go through the motions, you know, seek shelter, yada, 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 whatever. All good. 425, just a different uh, mission set. You're more active in some ways and um, different experience uh, in just how we approached, you know, the missions are a little bit different. And going off a little sleep, doing a lot uh, off of no sleep there and kind of plays mind games with you a little bit. And, uh, you know, there were just different experiences there again nothing too pressing and too too dramatic um but again you're on high alert all the time just wondering you know you, you thinking about the what ifs and some situations that definitely could have been out of hand and but again everything worked out for the better and you know we're all here i guess and so that's good you know you come home and it's like okay now you're you're picking life up where you left off and what, and let me go back, and so when you're deployed, like, you, you make these friendships and these bonds and with people and the camaraderie, and, you know, it's, like, it's awesome, and um, <clears throat> you come home, and everybody just kind of scatters, um, you know, you got to grow up and live your life, but you think back and you realize, like, you're not going to be that awesome ever again, like, you <laughs> You're in great shape. You're king shit. Like you had it going on. Um, you had big boy responsibilities. You got like-minded individuals, and then like you're home and like everybody's lame. You're forced to, and you have to face like average normal people, and they all suck. Nobody can relate. Like, you miss the good times. There were some hard times, you know. Everybody struggled at some point with something. And you're all there for one another. But when you're home and, like, everybody just sucks. Like, nobody gets it. They all think they do or they they sympathize. And you're like, Sh shut the fuck up. And um, <clears throat> so now it's, like, time to find a big boy job. Time to find your path, your career path, your your purpose in life or whatever. And, um... <clears throat> Like, nothing fits. Nothing's right. At one point, I was trying to get into the private sector, working for a private security company overseas. And I tried to get into, you know, uh, state police, and, you know, uh, Pipe Fitters Union, and then, you know, MDOC. And, you know, you're trying to figure out what to do. And, like, you want to maintain that rush and adrenaline that that controlled chaos i guess like you got to be involved in danger like i don't know if you caught what i just said i, I applied to oh and uh border patrol i was in the process of going through with border patrol so everything revolves around 
chaos, danger, a sense of being in responsibility at a level that most people can't just understand and relate to. In a time, I just like, that's what I want to be. I want to stay in that mode. And so eventually ended up um, getting with MDLC. You know, that was all good and fun. You know, every day is chaotic. You don't know what's going to happen. Again, it's that same adrenaline. It just never ends. And again, I'm kind of like mentally getting myself into that I'm a badass mode and I love this feeling. I'm going to the gym all the time. I'm physically preparing myself to go to this job every day where something bad could potentially really happen. And all the meanwhile, I get married, had my first child, a lot going on. And I'm just kind of like in that search of that that high of like, oh, that close call, that close moment, you know, and, you know, trying to surround myself by a group of people that are like-minded and that like kind of get off on that same shit. You know, still in the guard at the time, uh, when 425 shut down, I was in the process of transferring over to 126, Charlie Troop, target acquisition section, right? And that didn't, that didn't pan out, you know, for whatever reason, you know, so that pissed me off. You know, I can't be around the guys I just got done spending time with. So, you know, my anger just like grew, my resentment just grew. And like, I just wanted to get back into that. And before I knew it, my contract was up, I was done. Now I'm just working for the DLC. And it's that same rush adrenaline, you know, things are happening inside the walls. Like, I'm getting a ridiculous high off of it. Like, I'm getting off on this. Like, I'm coming to work. I remember one time coming to work. I go through periods where I'm, like, going through the gates. People would ask me, like, how I was doing and everything. And I tell them, I'm here to fuck shit up today. Like, I'm here to fuck shit up. I'm looking for trouble. Like, it's going down. I don't care. Like, I'm the guy that's going to respond to guys stabbing each other, killing each other. And I want to be right in the middle. I don't care. You know. And, uh, like, at this point, I'm, like, I'm hoping one of these inmates, like, gets in my face and catches me on a bad day because I'm going to end them. I don't care. And it's that feeling of you're Superman, you can do anything, and you want to be involved in chaos and dangerous situations because, again, it's that, it's like, it's like that high. You know, you want to constantly maintain that high. And uh, in the process, um, you know, screwing with my sleep, screwing with my sleep a lot. And uh, there's times where, like, driving through certain areas like i'd go back home to detroit or whatever and certain areas like you smell certain things or you see how you know a certain group of people kind of uh, interact and like it's it's bringing old feelings back when you're you're deployed with your buddies and you're going through the villages and stuff like that and it's just that sense that you know something might pop off here and you're constantly on edge so this is going on for some time now along with it i noticed like, I was forgetting, I was very forgetful, very forgetful. Like, acclimation to me was a struggle. And I don't know if it was because my mind was still stuck on wanting to just be back. Like, things were simpler then. Like, you had your mission, you had your buddies you were with. Like, here's your mission, here's what you're doing. Like, everything's simple. The only thing you got to worry about is being alive, keeping each other alive. Like, when you're home, you're surrounded by idiots. And there's nothing you can do about idiots, Right. Cause you got it all figured out you're squared away but everybody's so stupid right so you just find yourself angry at everyone for every little thing and that's kind of like what I, I fell into took a toll on my first marriage just going off about nothing you know short fuse over everything you know i sought out help or whatever and all of a sudden like medications left and right and then you're not who you are like i was feeling numb literally at one point like I was on medications that were making me drool myself it's just stupid quit all that stuff cold turkey like I didn't feel like I needed to mask my feelings or emotions so I thought I could figure it all out so the one thing that always kept me centered um, was going to the gym like that was always like my place of tranquility that's where I worked everything out my aggression everything like the gym has always been the place for me so yeah I did that for a while and you know as some of us have experience like you're in the gym for a while and you're out of it you know life happens you know well divorce ended up happening yeah you uh put on the you put on the weight and you know, you're down about yourself you're like how the hell did i get myself you know up to this point i'm out of shape and feel bad about myself you put yourself on a pity party you throw yourself a pity party and again you're trying to find your life's purpose it took me a while but i finally figured out that I need to change my environment. I need to change the scene around me that being in chaotic situations isn't always the healthy thing. So when I do something completely different, it's not chaotic. 
in that sense where your life is in danger every day. And that's done a lot of positives. Um, you know, I've tried counseling and everything, and it's one of those things, like, I don't know if I just don't care to have somebody that doesn't know me tell me what I what they think I need to do to help my situation uh, emotionally or mentally. And so I've always been one of those, like, I need to handle it myself. I think a lot of guys can relate to that. You know, well, I don't know if it's pride or just you're embarrassed or whatever, but I do feel like it takes a very special and specific type of person to understand a veteran. That's just how I feel. Uh, so I changed the environment. Uh, I'm no longer in that type of chaotic environment. So it's a work in progress. Um, like the numbness, like as far as like the uh, traditional symptoms of PTSD, like numbness, uh, loss of interest in things that you normally would enjoy doing, uh, separation from like friends, family, or people that are close to you, uh, your sleeping patterns, like yeah, all of that. I my sleep's still messed up. I can never get a good sleeping pattern in. I feel tired most of the days, mentally just exhausted. Like as you're witnessing right now, just losing my train of thought constantly. Like I'm like a goldfish, you know. <laughs> um, is that because I'm no longer in an environment that requires me to be on all the time? So does my brain get lazy? I don't know. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out myself here. I think for me, it's just missing that old me, I guess. You know, that's where I was at my best, you know, in every way. Mentally sharp, physically fit. You know, driven. I know now that I'll never get back to that. That was a different chapter in my life. And as I get older, I realize that that's what life is. It's it's like a big ass book. You go through chapters, different chapters, and you evolve. You know, as you get older, and you grow, and it's up to you to kind of figure out how it is that you're growing. How, how do you need to grow? What adjustments do you need to make? And for me, it was changing the line of work. I'm out of that chaotic, violent, you know workplace but I, I am now physically abusing myself with what I do and I'm working with my hands I'm working with my body and uh, you know I have a family and I'm working on building that up and so now I got people that rely on me depend on me so that's a challenge and that's a good challenge to have what's been working for me is just thinking about that and realizing that I still have those great friendships in reaching out uh, from time to time and keeping those connections. Most people that know me know that I, I like to joke a lot and I like to laugh a lot and uh, you know, so I, I, I stick to that. Uh, that helps my mind escape a lot. Um, and then just going back to things that, you know, like yard work, gardening, uh, maybe drawing. You know, sometimes I doodle a little bit. You know, that brings me joy. Uh, spending time with you know, your, your close relatives and loved ones, you know, and finding joy in that. What helps me besides all that is just understanding that that was another life and that I just need to move forward. Now I need to focus on the future and what comes, what comes next. You know, I can't get myself caught up in this mental prison. Uh, you know, it's not healthy. You know, I feel like... Uh, a lot of veterans do that. We've all done it. Um, and we just need to realize that we, it doesn't need to happen. Yeah, it's like, and it's, but keeping those healthy, uh, those relationships, you know, healthy and uh, communication open to your buddies and like just staying in touch every now and then. Please understand, you know, for you average everyday folks out there or even some veterans, like because I don't call you every day, doesn't mean I don't love you any less. Understand that my life is, has changed, my priorities have changed, my love for you has not changed. And I think a lot of us veterans, we feel like people have forgotten about us, like friends have forgotten about us. Like I don't forget about any of you guys I've ever served with. Like I, I have different priorities. Yes, we could send a text every now and then. But if I'm not the one, you be the one. Take that leap. Like we gotta let each other know that we still think about one another. Regar regardless of experiences, we've all had different experiences and uh, our deployments have affected us in some way, shape or form in, in our own ways. But that does not have to dictate how you live your life. Just understand that there's more to life than what you went through, what we went through. Like, 
leave it where it's at. Leave it where it's at. If you can't do that, um, I found it that it's really hard to move forward. Um, and it's really hard to make friends with normal people. Average people, right? Believe it or not, it can be fun to be friends with normal people. I know. It's hard to believe. I, I definitely learned a lot from my experiences and my failures. You know, I don't have it all figured out. I use some of those experiences as, you know, there's a lot of positives that come out of it, too. How to be a good friend to somebody, an average person, right? How to just be caring and not take every day for granted and, uh, you know, because you never know what happened, what could happen. Destroyed relationships. You, you, can't maintain, you can't maintain healthy relationships. Yeah, it's, and it's a pattern. I like, think that's the thing. It's it's a pattern, uh, and you don't see it because you're stuck in that dumb shit. You know what I mean? And uh, this is like it's like being watching a tornado hit a town or watching a yeah. tornado. Yeah. Yeah. It looks a whole lot different, but you're you're in the middle of the tornado. Like, you're, you that's the only the view. The only you know. right. You know. You can't. You're you're stuck. You can't look at it from the outside and see everything that surrounds that. Well, and I think that's where a, a lot of dudes like. Some of them just don't see it, aren't mm -hmm. self-aware enough, or some of them choose to ignore it because, like you said, they don't want to. They they want to keep. They don't either don't want to show weakness or they don't want to admit that. Oh look, I'm fucked up. I this ain't right, this. right. You know. Right. So it's one or the other, and I know there's there's some jackasses out there. Like right. Some some people are just stupid. Right. In every area, army, fucking mm -hmm. whatever. Like mm -hmm. some people are just dumb that don't yep. see. Like, oh, right. yeah, you know. Yeah, and I know that's exactly it, too. Like, yeah, got home, trying to find my purpose. Right. And then I found myself, you know, just putting myself in danger all the time because I thought that's what I wanted, you know, that constant high. And right. then, well, I took a toll on my home family. And, yeah, they getting hammered all the time, getting drunk. And just, it just, it just fed my anger even more. And not saying that it's the only reason that my marriage failed there's other aspects to that but uh it was definitely a, a an ingredient and yeah then it just it, but not everybody's capable of stepping out and then looking in and saying right. wait a minute i need to change something and for me personally was that wait a minute i'm like going from this environment to it's like the same thing like i gotta step out and like slow down and breathe right. and surround myself with like normal people, average, okay. everyday folks. Uh, they're just not be an environment that is going to, you know, my, yeah. make me feel like I'm at risk all the friggin' time. Right. And, and that's actually what started to kind of help me get out of it slowly and then getting back into the gym. Right. Uh, what That's what makes me happy, you know, feeling physically exhausted, also mentally wore me out, so that was nice. And then, you know, just maintaining that communication with your friends and, right. you know, some buddies that you serve with or whatever. And, um, and it's always been really... That's been really, really helpful. Sleep is still still shit, but I mean, whatever. Uh, but I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, if I were to tell you, like, that I did miss being in in shape and being feeling oh, like yeah. I was awesome, and then you know, like that's great. But that's nostalgia. That's you know, it's in the past. That was another chapter. That was you know years ago. That was in a whole other book, right? So like now, it's like I'm in a process of writing my next few chapters in life and then just moving on and using those experiences and to make me better and stronger and some different aspects and right. stuff like that. Uh, there's been times where I just felt super alone and isolated because um, like nobody understands. Everybody talks about, well, I totally get it, bro. I totally understand. It's like, you don't know shit. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Right. But um, yeah, that's uh so like, all right. So how much from where you were to like where you are now? Do you think it was a like leaps and bounds, like huge progress, or does it feel like it's just a little bit and you still got like a long way to go? Um, I still got a long way to go. I feel like, I mean, there's been, there's been progress. There's been a lot of setbacks too. But I think deep down, like for me, like I can't speak on anybody else's experiences or you know everybody deals with their stuff differently but i feel like in the end like you have to 
deep down be willing to just let go of some of the shit and the baggage and just say like that's not right. You know what I mean? And right. I and I just so for me it's like there's been some leaps and bounds and there's been some setbacks, but you know, as long as I understand that there's you know, there's always tomorrow and there's always an opportunity to be better. Like, you know, now it's a matter of me wanting to make that that choice to be a better person and just and oh, just yeah. move on. You know, never forget, you know, um, your struggles because that's what actually strengthens you. Um, but you have to make the decision, is that going to make me stronger and better or is that going to put me back into a mental pit? You know, and uh, for me, I think choose not to go back to being negative, being angry over nothing. It doesn't need to happen. They choose to be happier.